Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, 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 finally, this little uh, uh, bridge was crossed. And not, I don't think it was crossed now or uh, in the near future. I think it was crossed way back there, but I think the information was uh, not available, if you know what I mean. And I'm talking about the bridge uh, between uh, Israel, the country, the Jewish state, and uh, Ukraine, the Jewish, I mean the Ukraine, you can say Ukrainian state. Uh, Ukraine, that's all you can say that, because if you say Ukrainian state, that means it's an ethno state, and you can't say it, because it has to be inclusive. Uh, anyway, so we got that covered. I actually have Israel, and we have uh, four Jews in charge of uh, the state of Israel. Uh, Zelensky, Mihal. Reznikov, who's the defense minister, and Yermak, who would be like the chief of staff. So, you know, the, this, the hands were uh, uh, together, but behind the back like this, next to one another, holding hands. So let's see what's going on here between these guys. I mean, this was an obvious uh, consequence. It was just a matter of time. It was not, uh, oh my God, look at the Jews don't help the Jews. <laughs> look, Israel doesn't help Zelensky. Well, well, they might help. Why not? I mean, if uh, Israel decides that uh, Ukraine needs help and they think that uh, Ukraine is on the uh, right side of the history, then yeah, why not? Because the right side of the history sticks with the right side of the history. <laughs> All right, this article comes from Sputnik. It's from today, the 17th of October, 2022. Medvedev. He says this, Israeli arms deliveries to Kiev will destroy Moscow-Tel Aviv ties. Well, that's a problem, see? You say Moscow-Tel Aviv instead of saying Moscow-Jerusalem. Uh, and by the way, did you know that when these guys are talking about Jerusalem being the eternal city, the eternal Jewish city, well, if you just uh, do a minimum search in, uh, not YouTube, not uh, Google, not Yahoo, on their scripture, Old Testament, you find out that actually uh, the Israeli took it from some people that they just, it's right there, it's not me just saying that, it's black on white, <laughs> so you might like it, you know, we like diversity, so you know what I mean. Uh, um, let's go and uh, see what uh, what's going on here. Kiev began asking Israel to deliver air defense systems and other advanced weaponry earlier this year. Last month, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky expressed shock over Tel Aviv's continued intransigence on the matter. On Saturday, Israeli Minister of Diaspora Affairs Nachman Shai said it was time for Israel to reverse course. What changed? <laughs> All right, the delivery of advanced Israeli weapon systems to Ukraine would destroy interstate ties between Moscow and Tel Aviv, Russian Security Council Deputy Chairman Dmitry Medvedev has warned. And I'm quoting, Israel seems to be planning to send weapons to the Kiev regime. This is a very reckless move. It will destroy all interstate relations between our nations, Medvedev wrote in the Telegram post on Monday. What did you expect, Medvedev? What did you expect? I mean, I don't think he's a, uh, a, an ignorant. I think he knew that this is going to be the next step. It's going to happen. It was not like a, he doesn't read history or something. He seems to be a, a, a well-informed individual. So uh, let me quote here. I, would, I won't even mention that the Benderite the degenerates were and remain Nazis. That's from Bandera, whatever, the, the Ukrainian Nazi. It's enough to take a look at their symbols used by their modern day henchmen. If they are supplied with weapons, it will be time for Israel to declare Stefan Bandera and Roman Shukshevich their heroes. Those are associated with Nazis. He added, referring to the Ukrainian World War II era, uh, ultra-nationalists whose OUN slash UPA 
Insurgent forces collaborated with the Nazis and slaughtered tens of thousands of Poles, Jews, Russians, and pro-Soviet Ukrainians in the areas of Western Ukraine under their control between 1943-1944. I'm pretty aware of those incidents, and they are still available in the world history if you look for them uh, until uh, it happens, uh, like in uh, George Orwell, Orwell's 1984 novel they get burned into the burner of history <laughs> and you're never gonna find it that means never happened ukrainian authorities have placed placed growing pressure on israel to go ahead with weapons deliveries in recent weeks and i'm quoting i don't know what happened to israel i'm honestly frankly i am shocked because i don't understand why they couldn't give us air defenses president zelensky said last month in an interview with french media on Sunday, a senior Israeli politician called on Tel Aviv to drop any prohibitions on arms deliveries to Ukraine, citing as yet unconfirmed reports that Iran has been sending advanced armaments to Moscow. I told you in a video before, I made this one, I mentioned the exact thing about the Kiev being bombed by um, Russia today. And that was not uh, Russia today, the outlet Russia, the Russian military. And that's why they always name that, uh, they say, the Ukrainians say that, oh, the Russians use uh, kamikaze drones by, supplied by Iran. 2,400 were already supplied. Oh, look, um, uh, Iran is going to supply missiles to Russia. So see, Iran is involved over there. So since Iran is the enemy of uh, everyone, uh, Israel felt that helped the enemy of my, right, friend the friend of my enemy, whatever. So on, um, on Saturday, uh, that's the one advanced military, and I'm quoting, this morning it was reported that Iran is transferring ballistic missiles to Russia. There is no longer any doubt where Israel should stand in this bloody conflict. The time has come for Israel to receive military aid as well, just as the US and NATO countries provide, Israeli Minister of Diaspora Affairs Nachman Shai tweeted. Well, uh, regarding the early morning uh, drone attacks today, we don't know if there were, uh, I don't know if there were uh, kamikaze Iranian drones or there were, uh, I don't know, US drones used by the Ukrainians and then point fingers over there. Uh, that happens. It's not something, oh my God, Emil, what are you talking about? The Israeli government has taken a, a staunchy pro-Ukrainian position after Russia began its military operation to demilitarize Ukraine and denazify its government in February, accusing Russia of aggression and calling for an immediate cessation of hostilities in Kiev's terms. At the same time, Israeli officials have expressed uh, reticence in escalating tensions with Moscow by delivering arms to Kiev. In the course of the Ukrainian crisis, Moscow has slammed Tel Aviv over the suspected organizations of Israel mercenaries in the conflict, uh, operations of Israeli mercenaries in the conflict zone. So, in the course of the Ukrainian crisis, Moscow has slammed Tel Aviv over the suspected operations of Israeli mercenaries in the conflict zone and rebutted Israeli attacks on Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov after the diplomat pointed out that Zelensky's Jewish blood was not a legitimate argument for showing that Kiev hasn't had a neo -Nazi, a neo, doesn't have a neo-Nazism problem. Now it's like you say you would say here at the States there's no racism against uh, you know black African uh, African American because we had a black president so therefore pff, what are you talking about that's impossible can't be so the same over there Zelensky is Jewish can't be Nazi over there no they are talking about well see that means a little bit of logic and a little bit of objectivity obviously Russia and Israel established diplomatic r relations immediately after the collapse of the USSR the Soviet Union cut off ties with the Tel Aviv in the aftermath of the Israeli war of aggression against Egypt, Jordan and Syria in June 1967 and did not reestablish relations until a week before the socialist nation's disintegration in December 1991. So I have no doubt that uh, uh, there are Israeli fighting over there, mercenaries, volunteers, however, and uh, whatever, that's their right. When they get caught, they will be vetted and then they will be placed 
and liberated, like the chiefs, the commanders of the Azov battalion, which I thought it was a very weasel move coming from uh, Russia, remember? When they liberated, they exchanged uh, about four or five uh, leaders commanders of the Azov battalion that were captured in Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol. I thought, I thought it was a weasel. I mean, if you really believe that those were Nazis, the Azov battalion, you claim they're Nazis, 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 and you release th their commanders, uh, it's like, uh, you know, uh, for what? For this and that? I thought that was a weasel move. That means you're not serious about it. If you really believe that those are Nazis, that you don't do that, do you? <laughs> you send them back, you judge them, you, know, you put them on trial and do what you said you will do, which is, you know, take care of Nazism, you know, put them in jail and whatever you, uh, the court finds, right? But you exchange them, no, 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 no. So, uh, whatever, it, it, that was weasel. I didn't like that a bit because I don't stand by your principles and that's a no-no. So yeah, Israel will provide, and they already do provide uh, the, the Ukrainians with intelligence and with satellite images where um, uh, uh, Russian army is located. I made a video on that. They say it's a private company who does that. Okay, yeah, owned by Mossad or something. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. It's like you would say that uh, radio, uh, Free Europe uh, or Voice of America are independent. They're not the CIA or the Secretary of State money and agents. Psst. Uh, that's what we thought that, oh my God, Voice of America and uh, Free Europe, Radio Free Europe are helping us, the Romanians under Ceausescu. And then after it grew a little bit, I did a few uh, readings here and there, I found out who was behind all those. And it was propaganda. Yeah, some things were true, but most of them were just to destroy our country. So they were not working for our interests, they were working for their interests and don't blame them, but at least you have to find out who they were. The problem is that the people who knew who these guys were did not tell us. Those guys are associated with that, 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 that. So the same here. Oh no, those are just private Israeli companies that just get satellite images. Somehow they have access to that technology. They have their own satellites out there to tell where the Russian positions are. That couldn't be but military. If I want that, can I see it live and go and see, see, okay, it's a Russian over there, and I just send the information to Ukrainians. Why can't the Ukrainians do it themselves? Why do you need an Israeli um, private company? They don't have their own satellite. How do they have access to that? <laughs> and who, have a, who has access? Doesn't the Ukrainian uh, government have access, but those, that private Israeli company has access, and that gets the live information, sends it to the supposedly Ukrainians and Ukrainians hit them with the American-made weapons. And I'm supposed to believe all that. Pfft. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.